So gardens are a wonderful place for us to be, to connect with plants, and gardeners feel a very special responsibility to the plants that they're growing in the garden and can contribute to maintaining biodiversity in the world on a global scale as well as on a local scale, on a mini scale. Um, and gardens are one of the places where endangered plants can be brought back to life and can be propagated. At the same time, I think as gardeners we have a responsibility to try to maintain those ecosystems in situ and to do what we can to propagate those plants in the wild and to make sure that the ecosystem in which those plants thrive stays where it is um, and is protected. Sustainable gardening and harvesting is very important, specifically in this day and age because it's, first of all, it's very exciting. Many people are opening themselves up to herbal remedies. Many people are wanting to know them, to work with them, and that's great, that's important. But it's also important that we understand that because of this, there are certain herbs that have become endangered. There are certain herbs that have been harvested to the brink of almost extinction. So I think it's really important that people know these, know what herbs these are, and can try to avoid them or find replacements. And in your own garden, learning that whole process of growing the herb, collecting the seeds, you know, spreading the seeds, working with the flat seeds in the next year. So yeah, I believe it's really important that we're aware that we need to, you know, just really understand these plants. Herbs like echinacea and golden seal and ginseng, these are herbs that are almost closely uh, looked at being endangered species because they've been used very, very widely. Um, and so it is important that, you know, we do look at the the, the growth of these herbs, how they're provided, and, and use them in, in respect to that, and perhaps even look at some alternatives, you know, in terms of those that are grown out there in the wild and those that are cultivated. Again, there are two different two different things. So it's very important to, to give a lot of respect to the earth, to nature, and make sure that we use them in the correct way and we don't abuse them in any way because, again, it's like everything, not only plants and herbs, but anything in our environment. If we, if we don't give enough respect to them, we will slowly, slowly start, start losing uh, those herbs. So one of the things we can learn from First Nations is to give back to plants when they have helped us. And this, I think, is a different kind of a relationship to plants as a resource than the West has. It's about a reciprocity. It's about an obligation and a responsibility to the plant, not just about taking from the plant, but about giving of yourself, of giving something back. When you go picking a devil's club, it's the roots you take, but you don't just just leave the top laying around. You clip it, clip it all, and put put it right back in a in the ground because they'll make roots and they'll survive. You know they'll keep coming year after year. So that in that way, when you're taking the roots, you're put planting some more at the same area. There's different optimal times to uh, harvest the herbs depending on which part of the herb we're going to harvest. So the buds we would harvest in the springtime. The flowers, obviously, when they're in bloom, that's the best time to uh, harvest the flowers for using the calendula or marigold flower for making a tincture for the skin. And the best time is the summer. The uh, roots, the best time to harvest the roots would be in the fall when the energy of the plant is going towards the roots. And so that's when we harvest the potatoes, the carrots, the uh, comfrey root any of the roots, the Dong Kwai root, Angelica root, that's the most optimal time to harvest those. Harvesting essential oils is a science and an art. And the essential oil is very dependent, the resulting essential oil is very dependent on the time and day the plant product is harvested, the temperature in the still, the length of time that the actual plant product is steam distilled. All these have a, a, a very, very big effect on, on the resulting essential oil. It's about getting to know your plants as well and knowing when the plant is healthy and how much the plant can give at harvesting time. So it's that intuitive 
the relationship that you develop with your garden over time and by being receptive to what the plant is indicating to you. And so you know when a plant can be harvested fully or whether you should perhaps just take a couple of leaves for the tea or whether you can take a section of the root or whether you just take a few flowers from the plant this time because you want more berries to come this time. So these kinds of practices make us more sensitive to the kind of impact that we have on our plants as harvesters and they also make us more in tune with the plant and what it can give and at what time.